Welcome to today's 3D print. We are going to be performing some surgery on my A9010. I got the new glass plate for it. I got 300 by 300 mirrors. By the way, if you want a good deal on a stock of these, they're a bit thick. These are like five mil, uh, five millimeters thick, but they're nice. Um, Glacial Bay six pack of 304 by 304 millimeter glass panels. Six pack. Ten dollars at Home Depot. Hello, I bought a six pack. So I have plenty of glass now. <laughs> I got the little thing and I did an okay job. I cut the glass and then I used. Where's the other bit that I had here? I used the sharpening stone from Dollar Tree to grind the edges of the glass so it's not so sharp because otherwise it'll slice the piss out of you. This glass is nasty. Get this up and out of my way. Since we have some surgery to do. I figure I'm just going to let this video run. Think of it as a live video, but it's not really live. I'm just going to not edit it, just, just let it run while I do the work. You guys can see it in real time. Okay, let's clean the plate first. This is one of the reasons that I love this print surface. You can beat the living hell out of it, and it just doesn't care. This is the Print and Z that I use on every single one of my printers now. Both my i3s have it, the ANET has it, and CR10 has it, and I've already got another one prepped for the second CR10, which I might be building today. I have just a little bit of the adhesive holding it on here, just on the corners. I was hoping it would help it stay, but it's still warped in inopportune times. See, I just, can you see that? Yeah, I just took a little bit of the adhesive away to allow me to mount it. So let's do a spot check. Perfect, good size. I've already cleaned the glass. Now, I peel off the adhesive, backing. This is thick, you don't have to worry about um, air bubbles. They won't form on this. Now, just give it a good squeeze down. I don't want to push down on the bed because you will bend your H carriage. Do not push down on the bed on the E10. That H carriage is not exactly what I would call a wonderful design. Oh, right, here's the problem I'm having with the CR10. See the ring? And it's at regular intervals. There, 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 and there. I don't know what that is. And it's an actual ring. It goes all the way around. So it's not a Z-wobble. It's definitely not a Z-wobble. Whatever it is. Because a Z-wobble would be one way. It would shift this way, and then it would shift this way. This is all the way around. Um... I don't know what that is. Now, I did notice when I manually and gently grab the gantry and slide it down or up, I can feel it grab. So it's like, ee, da, ee, da, ee, da, ee, da. you can feel it. You can feel a, a glitch at regular intervals. And I'll, uh, I'll bet my CR10 that that glitch is um, where these rings are. So I gotta figure out where that's coming from. Otherwise it's great, but I gotta figure out where that ring is coming from because I want better nose cones. Alrighty, so that is ready. I wanna keep the finished edges forward. This is just gonna sit on here. 
Now I have something I want to try. I hate the binder clips. I really hate the binder clips, but I like being able to remove this. So I think I need to live with the binder clips. I don't usually have anything on the sides of the print here. So I'm just going to use two binder clips to hold it on. So all I need to do is keep the bed from moving. The glass will take care of the flatness. That's the whole point of the glass. You don't have to worry about it being flat. The glass will make sure it's flat. So I just got to make sure I don't put anything where the things are. I'm going to crank these all the way down. This is significantly thicker. I think it is all the way down. There it goes. I'm still trying to source those super flat springs that the CR10 uses. I'd like to replace the springs on all of my printers with those springs, but I have not found a place to get them yet. Okay, we are fully flat. Let's move this out of the way. Scraper. The is that the old one? Yeah, it's the old Benji. Grabbers, nips, ruler. Okay. Uh, so you take this, bring it around here like this, and lay it on the bed. And now we can turn this. Okay. okay, now, I think I figured out how to handle a stepper motor issue. It's got four steppers. Let me get you guys in here a little closer. It's got multiple steppers, so I'm just going to take the Y stepper and put it in place of the stepper with the bench shaft. Because if the Y has a bench shaft, it won't affect the print at all, because the belt will just absorb any deviation. Um, but this is directly coupled to the shaft, and this is the bench shaft, so that's the one that needs to be replaced. So I'm going to stick with the tried and true procedure that I know. Completely remove the screws. Contrary to popular belief, this printer has no 3D printed components. The only 3D printed pieces on this printer are non-structural, meaning these end caps, which are not under load. They don't do anything. They just sit there and hold the rod. Any structural component of this printer is metal. Everything. There isn't a piece of plastic on here except for these rod holders. That's it. Everything else is metal. Even the extruder assembly, all metal. Give this a jiggle, and it will pop right off. It's just a bearing block. That's all it is. Now what you do is you take your screwdriver in here, and you pop your little hammer nuts out. Okay. Pop your screws back into your blocks. Put the hammer nut back on, and I'll show you how to deal with this later. Okay. Okay. That one is. I want to keep them on the right and left just in case they are not symmetrical, but I believe they are symmetrical. waiting to do the glass plate until I got the replacement parts because I figure I'm going to have to re-level it anyway so I might as well wait until I have everything and I only have to re-level it once because in theory this printer should become as rigid as uh, my other printers and not require frequent leveling anymore although I'm still super sketch on that 
base plate. I do not like the carriage plate on this printer. Um, but this printer prints so incredibly nicely, and I do mean incredibly nicely. I believe it might be one of the nicest printing printers I have. It's not the nicest printer I have. I think the CR10 will kick its ass. But it's one of the nicest that I have, that I've ever had, for print quality. So I think it might be worth a couple of upgrades. The upgrades won't improve quality, but what they will do is improve reliability. That's what most of my upgrades are for. They're not to make the print print better. They're to make it easier for me to use it and or um, easier for maintain reliability, for things to stay put where they're supposed to stay and not jiggle and move around. And that's what I love about my my Modern Price Maker Select with my Z bracing and my Flexion. That printer is so rock solid stable. Uh, I don't have to re-level it. I don't have to do anything. I want to do something. I turn the printer on and I tell it to go. It just does it. And that is what I would like to see in this. I don't think that's going to be possible with that H carriage underneath the plate. I think it's always going to need a little tiny bit of tweaking here and there to do this or that. Not a big deal, but I would like to try to improve it if I can. Uh oh. That is stripping. There we go, got it. Gonna have to be careful with that one. It wants to strip. I don't know if it's the tools or if it's the um, bolts, but one or the other is garbage. I also downloaded the um, improved tensioning brace for underneath the bed. I should have printed that first and did it all at once, but uh, what are you going to do? It will have to happen later. same for a yep identical goody goody leave these in here and take a chance of bending them so I'm going to remove them completely. I should simply thread out. Alrighty now. There's a plug handy. Keep this um, gantry from falling. can't fall past that zip tie so it'll stay out of my way See this? Yes, you can. So now I'm removing the support plate from the stepper. This will now become the Y stepper. And this shall become the Z stepper. Let me make sure it's straight. I don't see any wobbles, so we should be good. Boy, that's under tight. Now I'm going 
get my new couplers. Now, is any of these better or worse? Actually, they look identical. I certainly can't tell the difference, so I'm just going to use this one. Okay. That's the big end. This is the little end. Here's the flat. Leave a gap. Since the other one had a gap. That up. Turn that up. Bracket. I want to replace all these panhead screws with cap screws eventually, just because I hate these fucking panhead screws. They are so prone to stripping. Just put some good quality hardware on this. Although, once it's all together, you really don't need to mess with it. Use what's available, I guess. Okay. flat the way it's supposed to be hmm, how do I get this to start there it goes I was slightly tilted and it just drops right in I think it's in there. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. I don't see any wobble. Uh oh. That's moving though. Oh, it's stretching the coupler. Okay. Okay. Now, to put the bearing block on, what you do is you push these nuts all the way in so the screws stick out. And then you can wiggle it. Nope, I want to wait. Uh, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Wait until you lower this all the way down so this can flex enough to allow the insertion of these. I ain't making that mistake twice. <laughs> Alrighty, so that stepper is replaced. Let's put this stepper back here. Stepper plug back in. 
why isn't it going in? Oh, so I want that a little bit. There we go. Plug the Y stepper back in. Belt re engaged. Now I just gotta get the bolt to go back in. Steppers are replaced. So now I have two straight steppers on the Z. Okay. Now I need to replace this rod with this rod. That should be as simple as undo these two, thread it out, thread it in. right in. There we go. Oh, that's sticking up way higher. <laughs> I guess this one is a little bit longer than the other one. I can adjust that a little bit. Guess that's as low as it goes. Alright, looks like this Z-Rod is just a hair longer than the one it came with. So I will not be able to put this pillow block back on. There's not enough room in there. Something I've been intending to do anyway was to put a hole straight through this all the way so the rod can stick out the top. But I think that's fine. I don't think I necessarily have to have that on there. all reconnected. I can snip off this, this side. I still see the teeniest, tiniest bit of wobble. Maybe that's normal. I don't know. 
I hope so. Limit switch. Okay, let's get this one back on. Yeah, now I can flex it just that little tiny bit. And these fit right into their sockets. Okay. I'll be right back. Just a phone call. Now I figure while I'm here, might as well tighten up this frame. It's the last thing you want. A loose frame. Since then your printer won't be rigid anymore. That would suck. Yeah, that's definitely not going to work. I'm not going to be able to attach that. I don't like the way this wants to move though. Hmm. Make sure that stepper's all the way down. I'm going to design a plate to sit on top of this like a little shroud, like a little fuselage, so that this won't rub against this. Mine hasn't touched it, it hasn't rubbed at all but I can see that being a potential problem. So, dip that in the butt. Make sure it's tight. Come on, goddamn Allen key. It's so hard to hold it in your fingers and angle. Jesus Christ. out of my way again. Now, what next? Finish double checking all the bolts. that is okay now I wanted to adjust this mine has very little play but I'd like to remove some of that play if I could in here messing with all this might as well do it right bigger I think 
is this in here? Bigger. Hmm. I'm going to have to take that off, aren't I? Damn it. Should have left it alone. No, I had to mess with it. Of course I did. leave good enough alone, could you? Oh, it wasn't so bad. I thought it was going to be a bigger pain than that. Nice. Oh, oh, I didn't tighten it all the way. socket for this to do it right. theory this works in practice this sucks actually this would be a lot easier if I just remove the hot end why didn't I think of that it's only two screws I can get it completely out of my hair Do 
I tighten it and move it. Tight. Now I gotta not move it. Until I crank it. It moved. Damn it. I mean, it's just a tiny bit. I'll just leave it. Fuck you. God damn it. Hey, Anthony. Nice. That's pretty tight. I think it's as tight as I'm going to get it. Oh, I see something else I can do too. There we go. Nice. Okay. Hopefully that's not too tight. I don't think so. That's nice. Tighten this one up while I'm here. And that one. Nope, that one. I'll show you guys how to do this. Ow. Just put a screwdriver in here and pull it. You see what I'm doing here? This is how easy it is to tension the y axis. This tensioner is fine. Loosen these two screws. Loosen the two that are holding in place. Drop a screwdriver in here. Two fingers around the screwdriver. Pull the belt tight. Tighten one of these buggers up. Tighten the other one up. There you go. 
your y-axis is now tensioned. I love these kind of tensioners because first of all, they're metal. Second of all, they're low profile and slick. And that is tons of tension in that belt. Very, very nice. No backlash. Okay, let's rebuild the hot end. Make sure that's in there. I don't know why people don't like the way this hot end's mounted. Mounted, I like it. I think it's great because it uses the entire plate as a heat sink, which is exactly what you want. I mean, that's a great idea. It also means it's very rigid. So it's not gonna jump around on you and do weird things it's not supposed to do. I think it's a fantastic mounting method. But that's just me. I'm not an expert printer designer. But I do know a little bit about heat conduction. I wonder what this is for. Oh, that's the channel where the wire goes, literally. Uh, derp. This um, shroud designed by CNC Kitchen is fantastic. If you have one of these printers, go get it. You will not regret it. Link is in the um, my first video on this. I if I remember, I'll put the link in this video as well. Double check, make sure the thermistor stayed put. It did. That's it. We're done. No more play in this. This is nice and tight now. This is nice and tight. Should be safe to power up. Seventy-five millimeters. I am seventy-five millimeters on the dot. Just eyeballed that little bugger. <laughs> what I just did there was to make sure my gantry was level to the bed, um, or trammed, as they say, because it might not actually be level, but it's trammed to the bed. The way you do that is you tighten your bed down all the way, all four nuts all the way down. Then you do your gantry leveling. Because otherwise, you'll be tramming it to a tilted bed. And you don't want to do that. And listen for the startup. That's it. Two beeps. Because this don't make no noise. <laughs> I really am blown away with how quiet this printer is. And that is staying put. There's enough gooey stuff that was left on the bed to keep from sliding around. The clips will hold it in place. I just got to make sure I never crash into these clips. Um, all right. Prepare. Nope. Position. I did not want to go to the air. Come on. Auto home. To position, move axis, 10 millimeters, x axis, 1 over. That's 
birthday. Why? Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, 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 sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. What I just do there, I raised all the screws up the same amount because you don't want the bed to twist as you're moving it around and leveling it. Okay. Just the teeniest, tiniest air gap. Position, move, ten millimeters, X. Oh, I am friggin' good. That was close. Now something else I'd like to do is give it a tap. Make sure everything's settled and double check it. All right. So if something is like kinked, you unkink it and you want the bed to be in its neutral position. can't get level in the back there. It's because my bridge is bent up a little too high now. So I gotta bend it down a little bit to give me some wiggle room here. Because this glass is so thick. There we go. Boy, that is cranked all the way down. I'll adjust that later to give me a little more wiggle room. That looks about perfect. Nice. Alright, I got it basically what I want, so now I'm going to disable the stepper so I can move it around freely. <laughs> okay, so this one needs to be tightened up a little bit. I think that's pretty good. still too high. I have to somehow tweak that. I know how to do that. Okay. I'm going to have to tweak that later. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but now my because I bent my arm up to not bump into stuff, I actually bent it up a hair too far. And because of this glass being so incredibly thick on top of the print and Z, I'm actually reaching pretty close to the limit of, um, well, there we go, that's a little better. I'm reaching close to the limit of my adjustment here. So I might have to actually adjust my Z up a little bit. No, it doesn't. Actually, that would be pretty easy to do. No one. Let's see what happens. Prepare. 
Prepare preheat. We will print ourselves a Marvin. I'm probably going to have to add something to the bottom of this to adjust my Z a little bit so that um, I can actually raise it up one millimeter to give me some travel adjustment. But I might be close enough. Gonna do X first. I don't want it to crash into the clip. That's enough to start feeding. Let's print. Still Marvin. Temp. Bring it back down. Feed some goo. go. Nice clean first layer. That fan's still noisy sometimes, but it quiets up after a while. That's it. Once it's done tomorrow and I confirm everything's working alright, I will print the Y bed adjustment. I will make a video of that as well. Here you go. This is the little brace that was um made for the A A10, the belt lock, I think he called it. It goes into the existing holes. I was able to get the nuts on kind of, but these are actually threaded. And, um, carefully snip the zip ties off. Loosen this all the way, have it come all the way this way. Get it as tight as you can within reason. They lock together with the teeth right here. And then um, then tighten this up until you get the appropriate amount of tension and you're good to go. That's a nice little part though, I like that, nice and solid. That, that You don't have to worry about that pulling apart. So that's basically it. The A-Nut E10 is for now done. 
I did get this block back on. I just drilled a hole through the top of it so that the rod would simply stick straight through it. But this way, at least it's captured. I don't have to worry about it wobbling all over the place. My biggest fear is actually me bumping into it and bending the damn rod again. So now I don't have to worry about that. Um, I do know this is prone to coming loose. Let's make sure these are tight. Oh yeah, that was a little loose. Come on. I don't want you to come loose like that. There we go. But, um, yeah, this is nice. It's built well. It's just got a lot of QC issues. But I can work around QC issues. Boy, that's too loose. There we go. That's a little better. I do believe that was working itself loose. Much better. And this is all nice and tight now. It's almost no play. Done. Now, later on I'll print a nose cone and see if the wobble's gone. So, as an overview of the modifications that I've made, replaced the shroud around the um, hot end. So now the fan no longer cools the hot end. It also has a better blower design here so that this air goes where it's supposed to more efficiently. Um, snipped off the reset button so you don't hit reset to reset your printer. Glass plate with um, print and Z surface clipped down. I do need to bend that a little bit more because I don't have enough um, movement to control that. Um, an adjustable Z might not be a bad idea. That should be as simple as adding a little bit to this. Uh, actually, that's really easy. Just a little piece of self-stick material. Just slap it right on there. That'll give me my little extra space that I need. Um, tightened up all the frame bolts. Drilled the hole for the replacement shaft that won't affect you though but now you guys know how to do to rotate the motors um, if your H carriage isn't bent you don't have to rotate the motors but you might as well I also rotated the Y motor to the side so that when I do this which I do quite often um, because I don't bend over so I lift it up so I can look underneath it so I don't damage the plug when that happens I tightened up this tightened up every bolt on the printer uh, my la actually my last modification is to make a slightly larger spool holder, just a little longer. Um, that's it.